Hello, this is the section 1.4 lesson. Uh, in mathematics, we like to, to take what's called the axiomatic approach to the study of new ideas. What that means is that we, we state a set of uh, simple properties or rules that a new idea must follow, and then we build more complicated properties uh, based off of those simple ideas. So in this section we're going to state the axioms of probability and then use those to, to prove a few basic properties of probability and one of those properties that we're going to prove is what's called the addition rule. So we're going to start off with what we call the axioms of events and so we defined events in the last couple of sections. An event is simply a collection of outcomes and here we're going to state some properties that the uh, that the collection of all events must satisfy. So it says let S be the sample space of a random experiment. An event is a subset of S. We've already defined it in that way. Now it says let E be the set of all events. So this is a collection of a bunch of subsets. And we're going to assume that E satisfies the following three properties. So number one, the entire sample space is an, ev is an event. Uh, number two, it says that if A is an event, then its complement is an event. And again, this, uh, this symbol here, A bar, denotes the complement of an event or, or of a set. And remember back from elementary set theory that the complement of an event is kind of, or, or of a set, is like the opposite of the set. We'll talk more about that here on the next slide. And then the, the third property says that if A1, A2, so on and so forth are, are all events, then the union of all those events is also an event. And so let's talk a little bit more about a complement. Uh, so here's just a simple picture to illustrate this. So this uh, large uh, rectangle, this is our sample space, so that's the collection of all outcomes. Here, this gray area, this is an event, so that's a collection of outcomes. And then this unshaded region, this is the complement. So it's everything that's inside of the sample space, but outside of the original event. Uh, informally, the complement of an event is the opposite of the event. And we're going to see that complements play a very useful role in the study of probabilities. Okay, so now we're going to state the axioms of probability. These axioms are properties that we think uh, every measure of probability should satisfy. These are not really definitions of the idea of probability. Rather, they're, they're properties that probability as a set function must satisfy. So it says, assume that for each event A, uh, a number P of A is defined in such a way that the following three properties hold. First property says that that probability must be between 0 and 1 inclusive. Uh, second, the probability of the entire sample space must equal 1. Informally, what this second axiom says is that the probability that something happens is 1. In other words, it's absolutely certain that something's going to happen. Third one's a little more complicated. It says that if we have a bunch of events, A1, A2, so on and so forth, um, for which AI intersect AJ is equal to the empty set for I not equal to J. So in other words, it, it says that if we take two events and they, they don't overlap or they have no elements in common, um, then the probability of A1 union A2, so on and so forth, is equal to the probability of A1 plus the probability of A2 plus so on and so forth. Okay. So if two events uh, do not overlap, we say they are disjoint. This third axiom says that the probability of the union of disjoint events is simply equal to the sum of the individual probabilities. Okay. So to illustrate uh, this third axiom, uh, let's look at this example 141 and we're going to go back to this scenario where we randomly select a cube from a bag which contains four red or four blue, three red, two green, and one yellow cube. Okay. Let's let G denote the event that we get a green cube and Y denote the event that we get a yellow cube. Now using the theoretical approach the probability of G is 0.2 just 
2 divided by 10, and the probability of y is, is 0.1, it's 1 divided by 10. Okay. Now note that the event G and the event Y do not overlap. It's impossible to get a green cube and a yellow cube if we just select one cube from this bag. So G intersect Y is equal to the empty set and so therefore by the third axiom the probability of G union Y equals P of G plus P of Y which is point due plus point one which is equal to point three. So if we have disjoint events, it's very easy to calculate the probability of their union. Okay. Now next we're going to prove a, a simple result or property of uh, probabilities using these axioms. Uh, this is a very simple result but very useful. Uh, theorem 142 says the probability of an event plus the probability of its, uh, of its complement equals one. And so to prove this, we're going to use some basic uh, set theory and, uh, and our axioms. Okay, so first, note that, um, that A union its complement is equal to the entire sample space. And we can see why that's true if we just look back at that figure from a couple of slides ago. And also, that A intersect its complement is equal to the empty set. So a set does not intersect its complement. So now using axioms two and three, we have one is equal to the probability of the entire sample space. Well, that's equal to the probability of A union A complement. Well, what we have here are two disjoint events, and so by the third axiom, that's equal to P of A plus P of uh, A complement. And so put it all together, one is equal to P of A plus P of A complement. So that's all there is. Uh, that's how we could use those simple axioms to prove a little more complicated result. Now, another version of this theorem is stated here at the bottom. Uh, it says that the probability of an event is equal to one minus the probability of its complement. So we've just algebraically rearranged terms in this, in this theorem. Now, this, this version is useful because sometimes it's much easier to calculate the probability of the complement than it is to calculate the probability of the original event. And so that's illustrated here in this next example. So a fair six-sided die is rolled until the sum of the rolls is at least 11. Find the probability it takes more than two rolls. Okay? So that means we're going to roll it once, we're going to roll it again, find the sum of the rolls. If the sum is at least 11, we're going to stop. If not, then we're going to roll again and add that to the previous two rolls. If that's at least 11, we're going to stop. If not, we're going to keep going. And so we want to find the probability that it takes more than two rolls. Okay. Well, let's make an observation here. We could calculate it kind of directly. The probability it takes more than two rolls well, more than two rolls means it takes three rolls, or four rolls, or five rolls, or six rolls. It's not going to take any more than six. Um, now, those, those different events there, three rolls, four rolls, five rolls, six rolls, those are disjoint. It's impossible to take exactly three rolls at the same time that it takes exactly four rolls, so on and so forth. So using the third axiom, we could calculate the probability of three rolls, plus the probability of four rolls, so on and so forth. So I could, in principle, calculate each one of these individual probabilities, add them up, and I'm all done. But that's, that's four different probabilities to calculate. I don't want to have to do all that work. So we can simplify our work by using complements a little bit. So let's make an observation here by our theorem that we just stated. The probability of two or more rolls is equal to one minus its complement. Well, the opposite of more than two rolls is two rolls or fewer, right? And, uh, but now if we think about it, two rolls or fewer, well, that means two rolls or one roll or zero rolls. But we can't get a sum of at least 11 in zero rolls or one roll. So this is really one minus the probability of two rolls. So now all we need to do is calculate the probability of getting a sum of at least 11 uh, in two rolls. Okay. 
Well, to do this, we can uh, use some results back from a couple of sections ago where we created this, this table. So here, this table represents the sample space from the roll of two dice. Um, we could think of this as like the first roll of this die and then the second roll of this die. And then here are all the possible sums uh, from those two rolls. So we want to know what's the probability of getting at least 11 in these two rolls. Well, if I look here in my table, I see that I've got only three outcomes for which the sum is at least 11. So the probability that's going to take exactly two rolls is 3 over 36. And uh, so then um, we take 1 minus that to get 11 twelfths. And so there we go. There's our final answer. The probability that's going to take more than two rolls is 11, 11 twelfths. So there we go. We see that calculating the probability of the complement was relatively simple, much easier than calculating the probability of the original event directly. So this example illustrates the usefulness of complements.